Hello, everybody. Welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series. Today's uh, presentation is going to be on layer management, properties, and how to modify those layers in AutoCAD. Not just AutoCAD 2018, but um, AutoCAD LT works the same way with the vertical applications and uh, pretty much going backward. 2017, 16, etc. So uh, here we are again today. Presentation will be uh, done by Naman Mysawala. I will be moderating Volker Coco, that's me. And then Bryce Hillen will also be moderating. And so we'll have plenty of people to answer your questions as Naman works his way through our presentation. So welcome everybody. We are happy to see you here, um, although we can't really see you. We we'll just see a bunch of numbers, but good to see a lot of smiling faces out there. Hey, so uh, our webinar series, for those who have been here before, you'll know that we hold these on a monthly basis. We used to do them once a week. Uh, they're monthly now, and we have an upcoming uh, topics which are uh, in July, we'll be doing some work with annotations. In August, scaling and hatching. September, all about blocks. Okay, and then we'll follow up in October with layouts, printing, and plotting in AutoCAD. Sorry, lost my train of thought, but that's where we're going. All right, so if you want to catch our uh, previous webinars, Go ahead and check them out on our YouTube playlist, and uh, you can also download the data sets for those particular recordings that we have, as you can also download the uh, data set for this particular presentation. That will be available after this um, uh, webinar has ended, uh, probably tomorrow sometime, actually. We want to get the recording posted first. You can always find out more about uh, our AutoCAD IQ series by going to our webinar landing page. And we would also encourage you to check out uh, the rest of the forums while you're there. And if you're really interested in giving your feedback about AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT, not just for the current release, uh, but for future releases, I'd encourage you to join our AutoCAD Customer Council. This is a great way to interact with uh, the product teams, uh, get your feedback about uh, maybe current problems or enhancements you'd like to see, things you'd like to see in the future release. Uh, great place to uh, just give your input. I encourage you to do that. Uh, a lot of us complain about things or wish we had things in the application, but uh, this is really the uh, venue to uh, provide that type of feedback. So AutoCAD Customer Council, check it out, okay? All righty, let's see. Uh, again, we do need to talk a little bit about the Autodesk Knowledge Network uh, because we are here in the pr uh, product support uh, section of Autodesk. And... Um, this particular PowerPoint has some links to where you can get some additional resources on AutoCAD LT, AutoCAD, and uh, this includes downloads, uh, any kind of troubleshooting, and um, uh, tutorials, and so forth. So some good links here when you download the PowerPoint later on. Check out some of these. If you haven't been to ACAN, uh, it is a good resource for information about AutoCAD. Okay, before we get to our agenda, I do want to run two little polls here because, uh, well, I've been talking away, and like I said, I see a lot of happy faces there, but um, let's find out a little bit about uh, you. Uh, just we're going to run two polls. First of all, we always like to see who has been here for the first time, who has been our repeat attendee. Um, we always like to welcome back those who have attended previous webinars. We're always grateful uh, that you're taking that hour out of your day 
for those who are new, and there's about 11% of you, um, welcome. Uh, we hope this will be a, um, a valuable web webinar, excuse me, <laughs> for you. And let's go ahead and just uh, share that real quick. I'll show you the percentage here. And then we'll do one more poll. And this one here is going to be really help helpful for uh, this presentation because of the topic that we are covering. So in this one here, how long have you been using AutoCAD? And by that, it could be AutoCAD LT, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, AutoCAD Architecture. How long have you worked with CAD? And uh, looks like most of you have been uh, working with uh, AutoCAD more than 10 years. So that's uh, quite a, that's a nice round number. Let's put it that way. 2% um, less than a year. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and close that one as well and share it real quick. So you can see those nice linear numbers there. All right, cool. Well, we got that out of the way. Painless, wasn't it? Okay. Let us see. What is our agenda today? Well, we're going to talk about layers and uh, just an understanding of what those layers are. Uh, the properties that are uh, that are associated with layers and those properties would of course affect other objects in your drawing any of, any of the entities that you would place on those layers we talk about creating and modifying layers uh, creating modifying not that tough of a topic but they are little things that will always catch one off guard uh, some layer states uh, where we can save what those um, what layers we're working with uh, so that we can quickly get back to those if any changes are made to them. Talk about layer overrides and that's pretty cool stuff that uh, Naman will be getting into, I hope. Um, layer overrides just allow us to see a different, uh, well, get a different perspective on how things would look in a uh, viewport. And then some additional tools that um, have been integrated into AutoCAD, uh, some of those being former Express tools, which at one time were not available in AutoCAD LT, but because they've been integrated, uh, you now are able to use those. Okay, so what about layers? What are they? Well, think of a layer as a sheet of paper, and AutoCAD can have 32,767 of these sheets of paper. That's quite a stack. Yeah, so basically, think of vellum, if you're familiar with board drafting, and how you would have um, objects on one sheet of paper, maybe resembling a floor plan. And then another sheet of vellum would have um, electrical. Another one would have plumbing. Uh, these would overlay, and you would be able to see everything put together, or you could just remove the electrical and just see the plumbing uh, and uh, work with it that way. That's how AutoCAD works with uh, all those layers. There is always one default layer in an AutoCAD drawing, and that is layer zero. Okay, so typically, I, um, well, it's, it's not a law, Okay, but it's kind of frowned upon to just place everything on layer zero. For some people, yeah, it's very easy to draw that way, not worry about where stuff is put, but where it bites you is when you have to modify things, modify text, modify all the electrical. The boss wants just uh, the electrical printed and nothing else. Well, maybe the floor plan with that. Um, you know, but doesn't want to, want the text. Layers allow you to uh, segregate those those uh, different uh, disciplines and um, uh, just allows you to see what you want to see at the time. Okay, so layer zero, you can draw on it. Most people do not. Uh, most standards do not allow for it. 
a layer zero cannot be renamed or deleted because it is there has to be one layer in AutoCAD drawing in order to create new layers. Another layer that is um, cutting down from that 32,767 is also created by AutoCAD. Um, uh, the user can create it. It's called Def Points. And this was added, uh, I think it was AutoCAD release 12 back in 1991, um, where um, item where when you placed dimensions in the drawing, they have little little hooks at the end, little dots. These are called definition points, and people do not want to see those printed. So those would automatically be placed on the def points layer. And um, uh, by default, it is a no plot layer, and you cannot change that. Uh, but that's what the def points layer is all about. So people still use it to put stuff in their drawing that they don't want to plot or print. Layer names. Well, as it states there, we can have 255 characters in length for a layer name. I wouldn't get too carried away with this personally. And if you have XREFs, keep in mind that those XREFs are going to combine the drawing name with a layer name. So uh, that extends the length of the layer name in itself. Um, so uh, there are some good standards out there for layer names. I'd encourage you to take a look at those. We have a PowerPoint slide at the end of this one, uh, at the end of this presentation that um, has a link to a standards guide that you can check out. Also keep in mind letters, numbers, spaces, and a few special characters. Um, uh, those, they can be added, but you cannot include the following characters listed there. So um, if things aren't working right, if you're getting an error, you may have a special character that should not be included. And um, yeah, all layers uh, sorting, you can sort them any way you want, but uh, by default, they're sorted alpha numerically. So, as far as layers go, we can use layers to assign properties to objects. And basically, they're not assigned to the object. Uh, we assign, say, a color, line type, line weight, other, um, uh, uh, we, um, no, I guess we got it covered there, actually. Sorry. Um, we assign those to a layer, and then we, when we place an object on the layer, it inherits the properties of the layer we're on. And that is when you hear the term by layer, that is what that refers to. Uh, we have drawn a line on layer center, maybe. That layer has a color, maybe yellow, with a center line. And the line that we apply, even though it's a continuous line, will inherit those properties. Layers also allow us to um, display the things we want to see. I was talking earlier about a floor plan with electrical and plumbing. So in order to not see the plumbing, maybe we want to freeze or turn off that layer and only see everything else. Uh, freeze and thaw are two of the um, uh, switches we can toggle on a layer or on or off. They both do primarily the same thing except freeze actually take, uh, tells AutoCAD, hey look, ignore this completely. Uh, pretend it's not even in the drawing database. When you're turning a layer off, it's kind of like switching off the lights in a room and uh, you know, you walk into that room, you're going to bump into the furniture. Uh, whereas with freeze, nothing remains in that room. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. We also have a plot or no plot option for layers. This is um, very much like the def points layer I referred to earlier, except that we have control. We can make any layer we want a layer that will plot or not plot. And uh, this is a wonderful piece of functionality they threw in a few years back. Well, 
been more than a few years, decade and a half, I think now, uh, but a nice bit of functionality. We can also lock or unlock a layer, and basically, when you lock a layer, you can still draw on that layer, and uh, objects are placed as easily as you want them to be, but no modify commands will work on those objects. So uh, I've plopped a chair lock into a drawing, uh, the layer is locked, and I try to move that chair, it's not going to. So uh, you can't erase it, nothing until you unlock that layer. So those are the, um, these are all columns you're going to see in the layers property palette, and that is what they do. Uh, skipped ahead a little bit. Now that I've talked about layers, we're going to have Naman show us how they all work. And Naman, I hope you're pretty much ready. I am. Yeah, okay, good, because I'm switching it over to you whether you want it or not. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pressure now. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, and uh, my name is Noman Mysorvala, as uh, Woker had mentioned. I'm an Autodesk Expert Elite. And I uh, wanted to uh, thank uh, Autodesk for giving me the opportunity again. But uh, let's talk about layers and not about me. Uh, Woker mentioned about uh, what the layers are and what the purpose of it is and if you are a lot of you are familiar with AutoCAD and you are familiar with layers then at that point but by default as he was mentioning uh, this is uh, the layers uh, control and you can drop that down and see what layers are available in your drawing uh, if I go to a another floor plan here I can drop down and see a lot many more layers in the drawing itself so we're going to just kind of start it from real basic in terms of creating a uh, layer and see how that works. But uh, let's talk about the different uh, methods of interacting with them. So the way you work with it is the layer properties. That's the majority of the way uh, people will work uh, interactively. You can always use the command line, which is uh, the best part in AutoCAD. But uh, this is called the layers properties uh, palette or manager if you want to call it and uh, what you do is if you want to dock it the problem with docking the layers properties manager is that I it gets truncated for me and then uh, if I have to expand it it just kind of gets a little bit hairy for my working style so what I do is I keep it floating and uh, I use my typical auto hide option right here so when I roll over it it just pops up and when I need it and then when I walk away from it or move the cursor away from it um, uh, it just rolls back and gets out of my way if you have multiple monitors definitely you want to use that uh, for that workflow so let's talk about creating new layers uh, so I am in my layers properties manager and this button right here is our new layer button so let's click on that and uh, we're going to create another layer here in terms of, let's say, we call it the uh, exterior. Now, when you create a layer, uh, it typically will uh, take on the properties that are available above, and I'll illustrate that a little bit later. Uh, you have uh, different columns uh, for layers. You have the on and off. You can turn on and off layers. You can freeze and thaw layers by clicking on them and I'll get into a little bit more detail what those are what that the difference is between freeze and off there's always a confusion between what the difference is uh, lock and unlock we'll talk about and then what color you want the layer so let's assign this a different color uh, let's make it red you have the 255 index right here colors which was the legacy uh, colors available to you but uh, Autodesk also then finally included the true color, so you can go with any color you wanted at that point. Uh, but I'm going to stick with the basic one, two, three, four, five, six colors here. So let's do red. And uh, the line type on it right here is going to be continuous because I want it just a line which goes straight. And then the line weight, I'm just going to leave it at default. 
uh, for the time being. And transparency, there's another pro uh, property that you can work with with layers. Um, there's plot styles. I'm not going to get into that right now, but uh, there are sessions on the YouTube channel where you can take a look at the how to develop uh, the different plot styles available within AutoCAD and uh, whether I want to plot their layer or not. So these are many different uh, layer properties that you can assign. The most common ones that we deal with is uh, the color and the line type and maybe the line weight depending on your standards. So let's create another layer here and uh, we call it interior. So notice that I am highlighting the exterior and let's click right here to create a new one and call it interior. Notice that it copied the properties from the layer that was last selected. So it's red. I'm going to change that to the cyan color right here, number four. And uh, we'll keep the line, change the line type here just to kind of illustrate how you associate line types with the uh, layers. And if you notice that I only have one line type available and it's continuous. So let's load a couple, a few. There are, I always had a confusion here what these ISO meant because uh, I'm in the US and we don't deal with the uh, ISO, mostly it's all imperial. So, but the, if you are doing metric drawings, it's recommended that you stick with the ISOs and then uh, the other ones are for mostly the imperial uh, feet and inches basically uh, format because the scaling and things like that are different. So let's uh, pick a few here just to create uh, you can hold the control key down and pick the ones that you want. So I wanted to get the hidden one as well loaded and click OK. Now, once you load that, I'm going to load another one, the hidden X2. Just select one of them. And I always had a confusion in terms uh, where I selected that right here. I expected that hidden to be automatically selected when you get out of that context. Well you have to still go back and select the correct line type at that point. So make sure, just don't forget that it's like, why is it continuous still? Well, you have to still move it down and pick the right one after the fact. So you can easily change those line types. Now they are loaded in the system. Um, so now we have a little bit better idea of uh, uh, the layers that we have. And I'm going to create a, another one here, like, we'll call it center. And I will change the color to maybe yellow at that point, which is color two in this case. And uh, let's make it center line type that I loaded earlier that I showed you. So now I have my layers. Let's, going, let's look at uh, how we create objects on those layers. Um, so we'll go ahead and set our layer current. A quick and easy way to do this is right here. You can drop that properties control, right? And then I can select exterior. I can draw a line or any command that I do at this point should automatically go on to that layer at that point quickly. So now we have a red line. I can also go ahead and switch the layer to interior and I'm going to use this rectangle command. I apologize, I'm, I'm used to typing, so I'm old school more so. And uh, you, I drew a rectangle at that point and notice that it is on the interior layer. I'm going to draw a circle at this point um, and uh, let's uh, draw that from the command ribbon. And I drew that circle and I just realized, oh, I made a mistake. I really needed it to be on the center layer actually. So let's move that to the center layer. So all I did was again, let me repeat that one more time. I select the object and all you have to do is just drop this down and hover over the layer that you want. And right there, that's how you basically quickly do that. I'm going to just, let's say, well, this circle needs to be in the center of the rectangle. So I'm going to quickly move that. Uh, so select that grip. I'm going to right click and say mid between two points. 
and click the diagonal and now my circle is in the center or yeah center of the rectangle and I'm going to place now that rectangle in the center of the other so let's move that quickly I'm using the move command and uh, oh sorry uh, I can easily move that same uh, way using the mid between two points uh, too so this is the way you basically draw objects on layers and how you change them easily. Now let's uh, look at uh, how we can turn on and off layers or freeze them and thaw them too as well. And what I'll do is drop, oops, uh, drop that down right here. And I'm going to turn off the interior layer. And notice that it's saying, oh, interior layer was current. Okay, I'm gonna still go ahead and turn it off, which is not a good thing to do because then you're drawing something and they disappear on you. So I'm going to switch it back to the exterior layer. It's an easy way to do it quickly. Drop that down and turn it on. If you wanted to do multiples, it's easier to go to the layer properties manager and then select the multiples and you can turn them off or freeze them. At that point, AutoCAD will not let you freeze the current layer because uh, it needs to still be able to compute and put things on top of it. And Roker said there was a, some nuances with uh, turning things off and turning, uh, freezing them. This is one of them that you cannot freeze the current layer period in AutoCAD. As he also mentioned that you could not rename layer zero as well. So now let's talk about um, how and what the difference is between uh, the freeze and off. Let's see if I can pull this off. If I say zoom extends, uh, notice that I went all the way to the edge of this, uh, the rectangle. If I turn off this layer, I'm going to use a different command this time just to kind of uh, roll in some of those uh, express tools that were rolled into the main product. I'm going to use this button right here. It says off and let's turn this layer off at this point and say yes. Now it's off. I'm going to do zoom extents. Notice that the, the exterior rectangle is still calculated. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to freeze that exterior layer. Sorry. Switch to layer zero, and I'm going to freeze that. Now let me do the zoom command extents. And now notice that it completely ignored the exterior circle or exterior rectangle at this point. So that's the big difference is AutoCAD doesn't compute it at all. Uh, in the past, uh, if you had objects that were turned off uh, and when you try to hatch something, um, it would still try, it will find those objects and try to hatch them around an island you had to freeze them to be able to not completely ignore them. But I think in the newer versions, they have fixed that issue. So that basically is the big difference between uh, turning it off and freezing them in terms of just the basics. Uh, there are other nuances when it comes to blocks, but uh, we'll, we may have time, we might get into that later. And let's lock, talk about the lock and unlock. So I need to turn on my layers and turn them off um, I can go in and figure out which layers are off and on. I have a really neat command in here, uh, which is, again, it says turn all layers on. So all the layers are on, and this is its companion, thaw all layers. So now my all layers are thawed out. So I don't have to go down this list and figure out which is off and on. I just wanted all of them to be turned on and off at this point. So let's look at locking layers. What I'll do is I'm going to lock the interior layer and notice that it uh, basically dimmed. So you know that those, that's a locked layer. And what happens is when a layer is locked, any of the modify commands won't work on them. So if I try to select that object and I try to delete it, uh, right click basically and, uh, oops. I'm like, uh, I'm just going to use the hit, the delete key here on my keyboard and try to select that object. And it says, if you notice on my 
command bar, command line right here, it says one was on locked layer. So it will not let you delete it. However, the center layer was not locked. Now it is a, it will delete those objects. So this is a quick way to protect, uh, let's say if there is a column grid uh, in a project, I don't want anybody to move it by mistake because that's sacred. Um, so I basically lock those layers down and uh, not allow anybody to be able to manipulate them at all. So you can't use any of the modify commands um, on the ribbon itself. So let's uh, unlock this. And once you unlock it, notice that it uh, basically regained its color. And at this point, you're able to manipulate that as needed. Now let's look at line weights because uh, drawings require line weights. I mean, to be able to be read nicely, you have to have some um, line weights associated with it. And the way line weights work is uh, in the layers properties manager again, I'll go back and uh, you notice this is the default line weight. Uh, I can use a heavier line weight for, let's say, I'm not going to change layer zero. Typically leave layer zero as is. I don't uh, make it non-plotting if it even allows you. Uh, don't freeze it, don't turn it off. Basically, you shouldn't be putting anything on it. If you freeze layer off, zero off, uh, it affects a lot of blocks that are that have layer zero, and I'll get into a little bit at the end uh, on that topic. So let's change the center to be very thin, maybe 0.9 millimeters. Let's go to the exterior and make it a little heavier so I can show it on, on the screen. And then uh, maybe it is, uh, the interior is a little bit less. So this is how I assign the line weights. And if I go right here and look at my screen, nothing has changed. Well, you have to turn on this mode called line weight mode. And in my case, uh, by default uh, on AutoCAD LT, you won't be able to find this in the um, status bar right here with all these controls at the bottom of my screen right here. Uh, it's not visible, that command is not. So right here it says customization at the bottom, right? Click on that and I'm going to select line weight. And since I'm talking about uh, layers, I'm gonna turn on transparency as well. We might not get into too much detail on that, but let's, uh, this is another property of a layer. And now I have this available to me. It says show hide line weight. Right now it is off and I turned it on. Now you can uh, visualize how it's going to plot. It may not look exactly the same as uh, your plotter might plot, I mean, but it's very, very close uh, to be able to see uh, how your drawing will uh, be plotted in terms of uh, the weights and the colors that it's going to be. So I'm going to turn this off because sometimes uh, it's hard for me to work when these line weights are on. I typically turn them on just to kind of look at, hey, how's the drawing? Will it look nice or not? And then turn it off quickly. Um, so be, I'll be able to snap onto things and distinguish between things that are very close to each other in this case. So let's talk about def points layer and plot and no plot. As Woker had mentioned, there's a little long history about def points. And uh, in the older versions, uh, the problem was uh, we could not, uh, with those dots that were part of the dimensions were plotting all the time. This allowed uh, us to not plot them because AutoCAD automatically put those dots on the def points layer. Well, everybody was using def points layer uh, for putting things that are not to be plotted. Um, and uh, everybody was demanding, it's like, oh, we, we, why can't I make my non-plot layer non-plot? I wanna just have to be able to create a new layer called no plot and put all my things that are non-plotted and customize and call it whatever I want, not just def points. So let's do that. I, what I did was I just created a no plot layer. Uh, let's change it, uh, maybe a very gray color or something so it, it, you can distinguish it's lighter. Uh, notice again, I had uh, picked the interior as my starting point. So it's matching everything in the back uh, from the interior layer itself. So I'm going to change the thickness to very, very light. 
right here. And then, uh, right, this is the column where it says no plot. So if you check that button right there, uh, items will not plot. And I'll illustrate how that works. So I'm going to draw a rectangle again, right here. Uh, maybe that is my sheet border. And, uh, and I want that to be on a no plot layer, but I want to still be able to see what my extents of my sheet is. Uh, if I look at that again, I made a mistake. I didn't put it on the right layer. It's very easy. Um, uh, you can drop that down and do it this way, or let's look at another way to uh, change a layer. I go to the, I turn on my properties. And right here, under the properties, it says layer, and I can click no plot. And how that works, I'm going to plot this and maybe look at assign a plotter and look at a preview. See the layer that will not plot. Any objects on that layer uh, will not show up in the preview. You can see the line weights. That's another way to check how your line weights are doing, whether it's going to be black and white or colors. There is a webinar on plotting styles and how those work exactly. I would highly recommend you can you want to check those out if you want to be able to customize your uh, plotting styles. So basically, this is a black and white representation of that. I'm going to close that and uh, click OK. Oop, oh, I plotted it. <laughs> so I'm just going to save that. And now you're going to ask me, hey, where is that uh, def points layer? Well, def points layers don't show up unless and until you s use a dimension tool. So as soon as I do a dimension object, once I notice these dots that uh, Boker was talking about, that those are on the def points layer. And once you have that, uh, do that, uh, typically the def point layer will show up. Um, they may have changed that in the newer um, versions, but uh, most of the time that's the quickest way to get that layer with def points was to just draw a, uh, a quick dimension and be able to get a def points layer. So that's uh, uh, looking at uh, different ways of uh, working with layers, the different properties of layers. We talked about the colors, we talked about the line weights, how they look, what plots, what doesn't plot. and uh, now let's talk about modifying just uh, this uh, layer, how I work with them typically. Uh, there are other tools available in this uh, panel right there. If you drop that down, there are more options in here that uh, work uh, to uh, allow you to manipulate the layers and many different uh, Express tools that I use uh, extensively are now available in LT as well for the past few versions uh, in AutoCAD. So they're extremely helpful. And uh, one of my favorite one is, well, I have a lot of favorite ones because I use them all the time. Uh, let me just uh, demonstrate one of the, let's, let me turn off a few layers and uh, turn them off and on or freeze, maybe lock a couple and uh, then review what I need to do. Maybe I just wanted to look at those items only and I wanted to be able to just isolate them. So I turned off all the layers. Now to, to quickly go back, I, I don't remember what it was. Uh, what you, there is a command right here. If you drop that down, it's called layer previous. If you click on that, it brings, it steps through those different uh, layer state or layers uh, you turned off and on instead of using undo, because undo will uh, undo all the other commands that you had done, maybe drawing lines and things. This is just, in a sense, if you want to call it an undo for layers only. So it's a really neat command that I uh, use extensively. So now let's look at um, another uh, drawing to be able to see why we use layers, I mean, in the first place. I have this floor plan. Um, if you notice, everything is white. If I select the uh, um, any line work, 
everything is on layer zero. Even though that this drawing has a lot of layers, um, everything is was put on layer zero. Uh, the problem with that is, well, let me turn on the line weights. Well, you can't control line weights. Well, I don't want to see the chair or the bench. This way you can uh, freeze and thaw the items that you don't want. And that's why it's important to put things on the right and the correct layer every time you are drawing and not just uh, not think about what layer an object is going on. Uh, in this case, if you notice, uh, there are many layers and I'm going to show you a correct version of this drawing, uh, which is called floor plan layers two. In this case, I can not only visually distinguish because I now have a good understanding of, oh, green is my furniture, red is my text, my tags are orange colored, my walls are you know, gray and things like that. If you have a list of uh, colors that um, you typically use uh, and uh, the colors that uh, work with them, it makes it much easier to be able to distinguish the doors and the windows and things like that. So let's uh, talk about selecting some of these objects and see if they are on the right layer that's on a layer furniture. Um, Let's say somebody had made a mistake and uh, put it on the wrong layer. Maybe the color changed uh, in this case. Now, if I freeze this layer, I'm going to use this uh, shortcut right here, layer freeze tool, and select that. Well, one of those objects didn't turn off. Then the reason is, well, it was on the wrong layer. So that, that's why it's important that uh, we make sure that we select and we create objects and put them on the correct layers itself. And let's look at a couple other um, options in here, what uh, we can do with the, uh, with the layers itself. And let's see. We can uh, look, put the text on the, the correct layer itself. And uh, one thing that I really, really want to make sure uh, that uh, as a CAD manager, I always stress, do not override the objects, colors, line types, and line weights, unless there is a very specific reason for it. Uh, typically, let the layer drive the colors and the properties. Um, you are able to change, instead of saying by layer, you can define a specific layer if you want, and or the color for that object. I changed it to a different color. Maybe make it a little bit obvious. And uh, I can change the line weight to a different line weight as well. But as industry practices, it's not a good idea to override um, objects, line weights, colors, and uh, transparency properties directly. I typically have the layer itself drive it. Make another layer for it if that really needs to be um, a different uh, color, but the same category for some reason if you have to. This way, if you need to make changes, all you have to do is make the change to the layer and be done quickly. So next, let's talk about this by layer that I talked about. Uh, by layer, by block, what does that mean? I always was confused what it was. And uh, we're going to look at this layers in blocks, how they work, and uh, what by layer and by block does. I have a bunch of different telephones here, um, and uh, I'll explain what these do. This is a telephone block that has everything defined on layer zero. So remember, Volker talked about don't put anything on layer zero. Well, blocks are a different animal, and uh, the rules don't typically apply on the what not, what not to draw on layer zero. You want to be able to make sure that you draw it on layer zero. So whatever layer the block falls on, it automatically takes the properties of that layer. So let's do that. I'm going to select the first telephone and put it on layer one. Uh, maybe put it on layer two so it's a little obvious. Notice all the line work and everything took on the properties of layer two. If somebody had gone in and modified these, it wouldn't be uh, doing that. Now let's look at this telephone and what I call it a partial main. What I did was I put some of the objects on a 
specific layer and not on layer zero. So if I change the layer of this object, the object objects that were on set by layer automatically took on those properties and uh, the items that were on the other layer right here I've called it a phones layer that's why it's important to keep um, all the objects on layer zero and by layer or by block now let's look at this guy right here if I uh, select this and I will put it on the another layer right here, it will automatically take on those properties of that layer. If I edit this block, uh, the other ones I'm not going to show, but let's look at this in the block editor. I will select the line work right here. It says by block. This one right here is on the layer called phones. And this one is also on the layer phones. I wanted to show you what it does exactly when you are uh, putting things on by layer or by block. If you do not override colors, it will take on the properties of the object. The prop objects will take on the properties of the layer they are on. If you override the colors, anything that is by block will take on the overridden properties. I don't know if it was clear, Broker. What do you say? Um, did I? That's how it <laughs> that one's always a tough one to explain. Uh, we do have a link to a uh, short uh, video yeah, right. that that expands on this. It's in the PowerPoint presentation, uh, but uh, I it, it did look good from what I caught. I was trying to answer some questions in the chat window, so I did miss part of it. I know. Oh. I'm a failure. Yeah, it's a tough one. It, no, no, no. It's a <laughs> tough one. That's why I always I check myself. It's like, you know what? I mean, it is a little bit, uh, you know, the, basically general rule uh, I would recommend is to put the entities uh, within a um, block on layer zero and don't override things unless you have a specific reason for it. Maybe you have to have a dash line, then you can do that. Uh, but if you are putting over putting partial items on a different layer and uh, some items on the layer zero. Notice what happens when you put uh, the object on the layer that you intend, but not everything changes correctly. So that's the reason why it's important as uh, CAD managers and uh, stress on why things need to be on the correct layer. Um, so those are basically the the commands then different uh, properties uh, that I work with uh, with layers all the time and anybody that is using AutoCAD does uh, and uh, there are some other things that I wanted to uh, point out that were added recently maybe a couple releases ago a few releases ago maybe so one of the problems I always have is that um, I want to dimension something. Uh, let me go into my annotate tab and let's look at the dimension and I dimension it and uh, it goes on the wrong layer because well my current layer is set to whatever that was and uh, basically every single time I have to now switch my layer to the maybe the dimension layer well, I don't have a dimension layer, so let's create one quickly. And let's create a layer called dimensions. Um, I'll pick one that is close to what I need at the end. So call it dimensions. Let's create another layer called hatches. And uh, let's change this color to something else quickly. And so to live alleviate that issue uh, there is a system variable called dim layer or D, dim layer and it is available I hope it's available under the dimensions tab uh, I'm used to typing so let's look at no I don't know I'm going to type on my command line and it's called dim layer and it says oh use current I will type in dimensions now I am going to draw dimension at this point. Uh, my current layer is layer zero and let's draw a dimension. Notice it 
I select the dimension, it went on the dimensions layer automatically. That makes it so much easier for me to work with. I don't have to constantly worry about switching layers. Well, you can now set it into your template at this point, and then anytime you start a new project, uh, the dimensions will be on the right layer automatically. You don't have to worry about switching layers or anything. Uh, similarly, um, they added another uh, system variable uh, called HP layer. And those are in the references uh, or in the script as well. So you may be able to, if you don't remember exactly what the command is, uh, again, I typed it in called HP layer and put it on the hatch layer that I created. Now, every time I create a hatch object, and uh, this object uh, that is one went on to the hatch, hatch layer. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's an empty. Yeah, we have. <laughs> this is where the actual the transparency layers yeah. really, really play a good role here. <laughs> hey, 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 Naman. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but we do have some a couple of questions I'd like to uh, address, and I'm not sure. I, I know Please. you were going to throw some stuff out there. Um, so the first question, and this was asked quite a while ago, uh, was if you could explain the layer lock fade um, uh, uh, control and uh, or system yeah. variable if you want want to call you know however you want to mm -hmm. look at it so and yep. then I have two more after that okay so let's do that one uh, I'm going to use this uh, again my shortcut right here uh, and uh, lock the layer right here and notice it kind of dimmed out to be able to see what lock was not locked if you drop this uh, control down further there is this command right here it says lay lock Fade is, I think, uh, the the command line for it. Uh, but uh, they do have this uh, slider that you can select and uh, make it uh, how mu however much ever you want to fade this object. If you really, really want to fade it, uh, you can easily do that uh, through this uh, control. Or you can type in always uh, lay lock fade, I believe so, uh, hey. or lay lock fade CTL. So hope that answers the question. Yeah, it's just a, basically a way for you to distinguish between a lock layer and and basically external references have that functionality too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's called X layer. Yeah. So the next one uh, that we had here um, was uh, with the um, um, with the uh, well, actually, it's a comment I want to make, and then I have one more question. So. When Naman showed you the option to place dimensions automatically on a layer or hatches automatically on a layer, uh, the cool thing about that is you don't have to have that layer already existing in the drawing. You can just type in that system variable, give it a name, and it will um, create the layer the first time you use a dimension. The only thing is, the way Naman was using it is he was able to assign a color to it right away, which is, you know, I would want it to stand out instead of using uh, the current color of the layer that was created from. Um, so just wanted to yeah, point that out. That. Yeah, well, you know, we all, we all probably know that, but we forget to, uh, you know, there's so many things we sometimes know and forget. But uh, the last one, and um, I hadn't thought about it, but um, the question was, um, have they changed how the def point command, uh, uh, layer gets created? And uh, because uh, someone had noticed, you know, that the def points was not created when you placed a dimension in the drawing. And yes, they did change how that worked. So um, uh, I'll just explain here uh, okay we're on the home tab and we have right there where it says dimension uh, in the annotation panel so yep. if you choose dimension from that particular um, uh, uh, command button it creates a dimension without def points if you choose a dimension using the command line or linear on that same 
uh, uh, or quick, uh, continue, any one of those, uh, it will create the def point layer. So uh, I, yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, that, that happened with 2015. Um, uh, the, um, and I, it escapes me right now um, why it was implemented just for part of it. Um, uh, you know, for for uh, the variation in functionality between how you use the command. Uh, I got, now I have to look that up again. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you can sleep tonight. Fine. All right. So, so um, yeah, and and there was a also a question about uh, can I use the XREFs on a layer, which I answered in the uh, chat window, okay. or can I use XREFs? create a, a layer for XREFs, and yes, just like any other object, uh, you can insert XREFs on a unique layer, and, and yeah. it is, I would recommend it personally. So, yeah. Well, I didn't um, mean to steal. Wanna, no, 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 please, uh, that was great. Uh, you may want to check out a variable call, if you want to type that in into the chat window, XREF override. Uh, that has been added recently, which uh, controls how, um, remember I mentioned uh, don't override the object uh, level, uh, colors and things like that. And let's say you get an extra from the architect or the mechanical or whatever, and they have overridden layers like anything, and you extra they're going in, you don't have any control. If you, uh, could, you can control that in 2017 onward, it's called extra override, and you set that to one, and uh, your, you, it will modify all the layers and make it all set by layer uh, at that point. And uh, at this, you can make it all gray, red, purple, whatever color you want and whatever properties you want. So it was a really awesome command that they added as well. So yeah, well, um, I have like two minutes. I can hopefully kill two birds with one stone somehow. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay. uh, so one. <laughs> So one thing um, when, when, when it comes to layers uh, is uh, through the paper space and the viewports. If you look at the viewport uh, and through the viewports, you can override the different colors uh, between the objects. So if I come in in this viewport and I select the objects, I can uh, change uh, the, the properties of that layer. They also added this new feature where you can now be able to change the color right here in this drop down too before you couldn't do that. So I'm going to change that to, let's say, magenta. And uh, oh, that was not the right place to do it. My apologies. Uh, where you do it is in the layer properties manager. And uh, if you look at this VP color, it shows you a bunch of extra properties. And you can change the line type and everything at this point. But uh, let's uh, look at changing that color just in this view only and this layer object is on E F T E R R and I'm going to change that color of that E F T E R R layer and in the VP viewport color and I will change that to maybe a greenish color and switch over so notice that it changed the green right here and it is still the um, color that it was supposed to be in the model space because it has not been overridden. You can do that with line type, line weights, all kinds of stuff. Uh, with each viewport can have its own. But I, I created this viewport. I want to set it up just like that. I want to be able to take it and leverage this into other viewports. There's this facility called Layer States. I can, uh, this is called the Layer States Manager. I can create a snapshot of all the layer settings and uh, I'll just call it high because I have zero minutes left. Close. And in this viewport, I will restore it quickly. Layer state, say hi. In this viewport, and now notice that it matches this viewport. So, Volker, I tried to cover as much as I could. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the basics were important because uh, we always learn about layers and everything, but just wanted to hit those basic uh, from the bottom up. So hopefully people found it helpful. So that's yeah. all I have now. And unfortunately, we always seem to run out of time. We have a lot of good questions, but um, 
uh, not enough time to cover all the topics you want to see. We will be throwing some recordings up on our screen, uh, Autodesk Screencast site on uh, AKN, and we'll throw out a link um, that will uh, cover some of these uh, things like the layer states and layer states manager, and hopefully that'll help you out a bit. Thank you, everybody, for um, uh, attending. <laughs> I lost track on that one as well. We really appreciate your time, and we know it's valuable. Send us follow-up questions to the um, Autodesk Help webinars um, uh, email alias, and uh, we'll do our best to answer those as well. Uh, there are a few in the chat window. I'll try and answer those here in a moment. Um, anyway, thank you again. Thank you, Naman. Thank you, Bryce. Um, appreciate your assistance. Great presentation as well. Mokur, did you end the webinar? Yes. Yes, I did.